More than ever before in Scrabble history, school Scrabble programs worldwide have become a primary pipeline of the game's fastest rising expert players. That's certainly true of North America as well. We've come a long way since the first NASSC, which was held way back in 2003. Players from 3rd to 8th grades compete as teams in pairs, and the event spans only 7 or 8 rounds of play compared to the much longer All-Ages Championships. An additional division for high schoolers playing as individuals was added to the event starting in 2017. While most of the young players in these events are making their very first foray into competitive Scrabble, games between the top school Scrabble players have become nearly completely indistinguishable from games between adult grandmasters. The pandemic put a damper on some of school Scrabble's momentum in the U.S., forcing the cancellation of the 2020 event. But thanks primarily to the efforts of Word Freak author and longtime school Scrabble coach Stefan Fatsis, a stand in event was held online, which was also the very first online Scrabble event I ever streamed on my Twitch channel. As a quick aside, I've been putting a lot more work into my YouTube channel lately, so if you're enjoying my content, it would really mean a lot to me if you chose to subscribe. Thank you. Most of North America's top youth players took part in the 2020 online event, including two-time former champion Jem Birch and Stefan's daughter Chloe, a consistently high finisher and top contender. The round four game in the high school division between Jem and Chloe had one of the most spectacular conclusions I've ever seen in a Scrabble game. Jem was in first place heading into the game, but Chloe was the top player with two wins and had a golden opportunity to pull Jem back to the pack in round four. Jem opens the game with Lech and Chloe answers with Rap, shedding her W and undoubling her R's. Jem draws the Q and U together and plays Quate for 50, by far his best move and Chloe uses that cue to play Quiz for 22, keeping a balanced leave. Here, Jem can play something like Dad alongside Quiz, gaining extra points from the Za overlap, but instead he plays Dusterd for 78. Both Dusterd and the S-hook on Lech are invalid words, but keep in mind that Jem is well known for his prodigious word knowledge, and he even made one of the most impressive bingo finds in school Scrabble history against Chloe the previous year when he played Kalasaya with a blank eye. Also, not only are custard and mustard both obviously valid words, but there's also bustard and dastard to conflate with Jem's word. Chloe also has a bingo response of ignorers available, so she chooses not to challenge Dusterd and risk losing her turn. After ignorers, Jem draws the first blank, but also five vowels to go with it, and he uses his only consonant, the F, to score 37 points with Fa, a great option here. Holding the unappealing FPV combination, Chloe plays her own top move of Poof for 32, hooking Zap. Jem does draw two consonants, but he still lacks any playable bingos and plays another excellent move of Hike, his top scoring play. Chloe draws poorly and facing a growing deficit, elects to play Vino for 17, unduplicating her N's and O's and shedding the troublesome V. Jem still has no playable bingos with his rack and plays Saucy for 34, dumping his U and Y for a solid score and keeping his strongest bingo tiles for next turn. Amazingly, Chloe has no solid scoring options through that tantalizing Y, and she plays a Noah to use up two of her three A's and set up a new bingo lane. Jem draws the second blank, and with a nearly 100 point lead, he's in great shape here. He plays Bay for 27 on the right side of the board, blocking the lane Chloe just set up. Chloe quickly puts down her own top move of Jolted for 45 points, cutting into Jem's lead and hoping in vain to draw one of the two blanks that Jem already has on his rack. 
Although Jolted did score well, Jem is still up by 70 points on a very closed board, and he plays BAM for 17, opening nothing new on the board, holding both blanks. Chloe plays NAV for a small score, desperately needing to open more space on the board, and even if she does draw a bingo on her next play, she'll likely need a second one after that to have any chance to come all the way back. But Jem takes Chloe's new lane before she can use it herself, and finally bingos with Explore for 78, his highest scoring move. This puts him up by 160 points with only a small portion of the game left to play, and Chloe hasn't drawn a playable bingo after Nav. My Grandmaster co-commentators, Jackson Smiley and Mac Meller, agreed that the only thing left for Chloe was to try to lose this game by less. Maybe yeah. now is when Yurd comes down. I was just, just about to suggest Yurd. Yeah, Yerd. yeah I don't. Not. I don't really think there's a path to victory, like Will said. But maybe she could try the bingo and at least cut it to a uh, two-digit loss. Yeah. But Chloe shocked us with an absolutely brilliant move. Be patient in situations like these and continue to think deeply and de- think hard. Wow, that's a great. Oh. Wow. Find. I don't know if it's a word. It is not a word, but, but what it's a, a great cool try. play. Great play, just solely yeah. because of how hard it is for Jem to challenge. Because from Jem's point of view, if he just plays Mint right here, he's still up 100 and he basically locks up the win. Jem doesn't play Mint. He plays a higher scoring move of me under Explore, going back up by over 100 points, keeping an even stronger leave, and reasoning that after drawing seven random tiles from the bag, Chloe is highly unlikely to have anything good through the open end. In fact, computer simulation suggests that Jem will still win 98% of the time after me. But to everyone's amazement, Chloe ends up drawing EEG H-I-L-W. Although this is normally an unappealing combination, just look at what happens next. It easily could be. Oh my god, wow. Wheeler. Oh, oh, oh my god. god. Oh, oh my. <laughs> oh. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> That's absolutely absurd. <laughs> uh, I am speechless. I'm speechless. I can't believe that <laughs> oh my god that's right chloe draws wheeling through the end for an 194 point triple triple storming back into the lead how improbable was this series of events she... but yeah, if we rewind a bit if we go back to when she was sitting with that rediscern rack if you asked us, like, if I asked you what the odds of her winning are at that point. Probably, le- say, probably like, a tenth of 1%. I don't know. Like, yeah, like one yeah. in a thousand. Like, one, of, one in 10,000. We might have yeah. just seen the it's one in 10,000. It's not better than one in a thousand. thousand. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> After a few more endgame moves, Chloe ends up winning one of the most astounding comeback victories I've ever seen in Scrabble by a score of 511 to 459. Her creativity and vision to try the extremely plausible re-discern gave her the tiniest chance to continue her comeback, and while her follow-up draw was exactly what she needed, it was her initial spark of brilliance that made that draw possible. Unfortunately, neither player would go on to make the finals in 2020, with Chloe and Jem finishing 4th and 5th overall. But this is the game that stands out the most in my memories of the 2020 School Scrabble Championship. Both players have since moved on to college, and in addition to his many Scrabble accomplishments, Jem is also a skilled crossword constructor with three puzzles published in the New York Times, while Chloe has rapidly ascended to become one of the top Scrabble players in North America, and the second highest ranked player in the country under 25 years of age. Epic games like this one have become increasingly frequent at school Scrabble events, which bodes incredibly well for the future of our game.